Hello everyone, welcome to The Real United States. And welcome to our new segment on cooking. Now, I realize that there's nothing necessarily intrinsic about cooking that's uniquely American. We all cook. But hopefully I can share with you at least some of the things that uh, happen in the American kitchen. And for those of our watchers that are in the United States, you know, maybe you'll learn something along the way that you can use in your kitchen. And, well, everybody for that matter. But this is something we're going to try. We've done a couple in the past over the last three years, and everybody seems to have enjoyed those. So we're going to try and add this as a regular segment. I don't know how often right now, but we're going to see what we can do and uh, see if, if uh, everybody's interested in it. We'll keep doing it. So with that said, <clears throat> I'd like to start with something that we talked about back in November when we talked about this little baby right here. This is a butternut squash. And at that time, the holidays were coming up, and we talked about making pumpkin pie with squash. And I showed you the, the different types of the butternut squash and whatnot. But uh, today, I would like to show you how to prepare this in a relatively simple way. Now, as I understand it, a lot of people go to the effort to dice this up and to peel it and then boil it in order to be able to, to cook it. That's a lot of work. It's a pain in the ass. It leaches a lot of the nutrients out through the water. It's, it's messy. It's just a, again, it's just a pain in the ass and I don't want to deal with it. What we do is we always bake them. It leaves them a lot less watery. It is a horrendously lower amount of work. And, uh, well, you know, I, <laughs> I like anything that's going to be less work. So what I'm going to go ahead and do today, I'm not going to make the pie, but what I wanted to do is show you how to prep this and go ahead and bake it. So you've got squash, which you can serve as a vegetable, of course, or is ready to prep and put straight into your mixer. Go ahead and make your pie. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to split this thing open. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this little stem off. This is a Chinese chef's knife. It's not a cleaver. It looks like a cleaver, I suppose, a little bit, but it's not. You could use a cleaver. So we're going to pop that off. I'm going to try and get the rest of this off if I can. Sometimes they're on there pretty good. There we go. Just need to get that little stem piece out. And then I'm going to just split this in half. Right down the center line. Now these are the same squash that I had back in November in that video. So as I said, they keep very well. They're still very firm and fresh and ready to prep. Voila, just split that right down the center. And much like a pumpkin, it has a little hollow area of seeds, but you can see that a good deal of this is all solid flesh. And I just take a large spoon, metal spoon, it's got a nice relatively sharp edge. Now these seeds can be saved and washed and baked just like pumpkin seeds. If you happen to care for pumpkin seeds, they are perfectly edible. I know my wife, Beverly, enjoys prepping them with a little salt water and then baking them. They make a nice little high fiber treat during the winter months. So there's my squash cut in half, ready to be put onto a baking dish so I can go ahead and cook it. That's it. Split it in half, clean the guts out. Get yourself a little baking tray. It's got a little lip on it versus a cookie sheet. And I'm going to line this with some aluminum foil. This makes the cleanup process a little easier. And the reason for the lip on the edge is because these will give off some of their moisture when you go ahead and you cook these. So 
You don't want that running into the bottom of the oven because if it runs in the bottom of the oven, well, then you're in for a serious ass whooping by the wife. And that, that you don't want. Just flip them upside down. And I think I can get both of these on here. Well, maybe not. I may have to bake them one at a time, but that's okay. okay. So I'm gonna stick that on there, that's it. Just put that on the tray. There's no additional prep required. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set my oven to 350 degrees, which it's all set for. Takes about 10 minutes for it to preheat. I like to let it go ahead and preheat because I'm gonna set this at 350 for about, about an hour. Maybe 50 minutes, depends, of course, on the size of the squash you're cooking. And when it's done, you're going to take it out, let it cool for a little bit, so it can reabsorb some of those juices. And it's going to go ahead and cool, and then you can scrape it out of the shell. Separates very, very easily then, no problem. And so I'll come back. When the oven's hot, we'll go ahead, we'll toss this in. When it's cooked, I'll come back, actually, and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, our hour's up, the timer went off. I shut the timer off. We're gonna go in and we're gonna get our baked squash. Don't put your face right in there because there's a lot of steam that comes out. Remember folks, never lead with your face. Now you can see there or not that there is some juice that has come off that's been captured in the aluminum foil. We got a second tray so that we could bake both halves simultaneously. <laughs> Things kind of sensitive. Turn our oven off. I'm going to give these a little bit to cool. Now as they cool, they're going to shrink up a little bit. You'll see after they've cooled, they're going to start to contract <clears throat> and shrivel a little bit, but that's fine. And then once they're cool enough to actually handle, we'll flip them over and I'll scoop all the goodie out. All right, so we've let these sit for about half an hour, just in their pans. And you can see any of the moisture that was here in the tray kind of got sucked back up into the squash. You see there's some little dimples here and whatnot as this thing's contract a little bit. Like I said, it was gonna shrink a little bit, but that's okay. And it's still pretty hot because it's got a relatively high specific heat for you nerds out there but it's uh it's cool enough to go ahead and handle now so i'm going to just separate it from the aluminum foil and you can see it's all nice and soft and i'm going to just scoop it out and set it aside now if you're going to serve this as a vegetable you can go ahead and just scoop this out and serve it right now with a little salt and butter and that's, uh, that would be, you know, excellent as a vegetable. I know some people don't care for squash. Um, others do. This is the way you do it. Just go ahead and bake it, serve it. You can mash it if you want, puree it. If you're a real purist and you're going to go ahead and make this into pies, you could put this through a food mill or, like I do, it's a thing called a chinois, which I will show you at some point in the future. It's a cone-shaped sieve with a pestle that goes inside and you squeeze things through to separate any out any strings or little lumps that may not have cooked quite well although this appears to have cooked quite thoroughly and you see it just separates from the skin very nicely one of the reasons you want to make sure that you you bake this pretty thoroughly because it won't separate from the skin it's really well done See? So it comes right out of there and you can go ahead and you can mash this up. If you're going to not use it immediately, you can go ahead and pack this in a covered container and put it in the fridge for probably oh, four or five days without any difficulty. If you want to freeze it, it'll keep for like a year uh, without it doing any real harm to it and you can pull it out. Typically what we do is we go ahead and we uh, 
run it through a chinois, and then measure out two eight cup increments, put it in a plastic bag, Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer. That way we know we've got exactly two cups. And depending on what size amount of pies or whatever we're gonna make, we can pull one or two or three of these out and go ahead and make them from there. And that'll keep, like I say, up to a year, no problem. So I hope that that was at least a little bit interesting to you. If you've got questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think about this new cooking segment or whatever you've got to say, even if you just want to say hi. And if you haven't already, we encourage you to pick subscribe and come along for the adventure. We love having everybody with us. And as always, thank you for watching.